Many know the GPS or Global Positioning System from their phones and other navigation devices that have become an integral part of modern life. These navigation aids typically provide location accurate to about a meter or two, which is fantastic in itself, but not enough to monitor volcanoes, which sometimes are deforming by millimeters. Here we will study how global navigation satellite systems can be used to measure millimeter scale motions. Here is a photo of a GPS satellite being assembled. These are basically car-sized objects that are placed in orbits with radius about four times the radius of Earth, or 20,000 kilometers above our heads. The satellites broadcast radio waves or electromagnetic signals that travel at the speed of light. By measuring the time it takes the signal to travel from the satellite to our instrument, we can easily calculate the distance between the instrument and the satellite. Therefore, satellite navigation systems are essentially timing systems, converting time measurements to distances. This is the reason why navigation satellites carry their own atomic clocks, the most stable clocks humankind can make. If we know the distance r to one satellite, then we know we are located somewhere on a sphere of radius r that is centered on the satellite. If we know the distance to two satellites, we are located somewhere at the circle defined by the intersection of these two spheres. If we know the distance to three satellites, the three spheres will intersect at a point and we have a position. In addition, we need the distance to a fourth satellite to correct for that we don't typically have expensive atomic clocks in our instruments. We must also know accurately where the satellites are located at each time. This information is called satellite ephemerides or satellite orbits, and these are calculated and published by international agencies. Navigation satellites broadcast a few different radio signals. For example, the GPS satellites broadcast on two different frequencies called the L1 and L2 carrier frequencies. You can think about these as two different radio stations. On each frequency for each satellite, there is a different repeating pseudo-random code, a sequence of ones and zeros modulated on the carrier wave. This is analogous to a repeating voice on the radio. The receiver instruments know this pseudo-random code and generate their own. By comparing the receiver code to the satellite code by a process called signal correlation, the time difference and hence distance to the satellite can be determined. As a rule of the thumb, signal correlation is accurate to one hundredth of the physical length of the signal. For the pseudorandom code, this length is about 300 meters, and therefore we can get distance to each satellite to about 3 meter accuracy. Typical smartphones and navigation instruments use this code on one carrier frequency for positioning. By absorbing many satellites, typically 10 or more, we can beat the uncertainty down to a meter or two. But we must do better to achieve millimeter results. The key there is to use the actual carrier wave of the L1 and L2 signals. These carrier waves have wavelengths of about 20 centimeters, and therefore signal correlation can give millimeter scale accuracy. We basically aim to count the number of waves from us to the satellites. This carrier phase positioning technique is a bit more elaborate than code positioning and requires long observation times, typically hours to days, to obtain the desired accuracy in a global coordinate system. However, there is trouble in paradise. The Earth has an atmosphere, and the speed of light is different in the atmosphere compared to empty space. Moreover, variable properties such as water vapor, atmospheric pressure, and the total electron content of a layer called the ionosphere, where northern lights and other phenomena occur, all affect the speed of light by delaying the signal from the satellite. These effects can amount to meters and must therefore be properly accounted for. The key to solving for the atmosphere is to use both the L1 and L2 frequencies broadcast by the satellites. Hence, geodetic quality instruments are often called dual frequency receivers. In the ionosphere, the speed of light depends on the frequency of the wave and the signals can be combined in a special way to either eliminate the delay in the ionosphere or to eliminate everything else if one seeks to study the ionosphere using GPS. 
The troposphere, the part of the atmosphere where water vapor is most variable, can also be modeled. The combination of the network geometry, all the visible satellites are above us, and residual errors in the atmosphere modeling result in the fact that the vertical component of the position is about three times less accurate than the horizontal component. There are several other issues that must be considered for high-precision GNSS geodesy, but by combining observations of the signal code and carrier wave on both broadcast frequencies and by observing each measurement point for hours to days, millimeter scale accuracies in position can be obtained and we can measure how volcanoes deform.